in the top 25, but for a hot second Saturday in Tuscaloosa, it looks like they might slip a little further down. The Tide, who haven't lost back-to-back -back games since 2007, trailed the Gamecocks through three quarters and needed a late two-point stop to prevent OT. Kalen DeBoer, what happened here? If you can't execute it well in an SEC game when things are moving that fast and there's that many good players on the football field, you know, that can that can backfire, that can hurt you. And so uh, the key is, is, you know, making sure we do what we do, apply our rules and everything that we have, whether it's offense, defense, special teams, um, and then be disciplined with it. And that's, you know, going to be the name of the game here, you know, this week, every week, moving forward. Sam Macho, that was not far from consecutive losses for Bama. We are a far cry from the narrative after the Georgia win. We're about halfway through the schedule with the Tide, exactly halfway through the schedule, in fact. What's your concern level with them? Well, my concern is not halfway through the schedule, but halfway through that Georgia game from a few weeks ago. The second half of Georgia, we saw that Alabama's defense, for lack of better terms, collapsed in that second half. Then against Vanderbilt, they didn't play great. Now South Carolina, you're seeing a consistent theme. The defense needs to improve significantly if they want to compete in the SEC for an SEC title. The reason why is that those margins at the top, we heard it, but they are extremely small, specifically in the SEC. There are many one-loss teams. When I was talking to Eli Drinkwitz, the head coach of Missouri, a few days ago and he mentioned how with a 12 team playoff most people think that there's a bigger margin of error but he said he feels like the margin of error is smaller there's so much competition in the SEC so sometimes these close wins or sometimes close losses can end up biting you as the season progresses when the selection committee is looking at the film yeah, Sam, when I was looking at the defense, I was really surprised at Lenora Sellers, the uh, young quarterback for South Carolina, who hasn't had a lot of success throwing the ball through for over 300 yards against the, uh, the Alabama's defense and three touchdowns. So that really um, caught me off guard. Now, he's a dual-threat quarterback, so I knew he was going to make some plays with his legs. But normally, Sam, when you watch this Alabama defense, they're buttoned up. They're disciplined, and they're very, very tough. And up front, it just it seems like they wasn't getting the normal amount of push that we would see from a defensive uh, front, uh, Alabama's defensive front seven. And then on the back end, the coverage skills, they don't have like a shutdown corner out there that I've seen so far, especially last week against South Carolina. So it may be scheme. It may be guys getting comfortable. Moving forward, I'm going to keep an eye on that defense, though. Tough test coming up for Alabama on the road this weekend, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. Neyland Stadium at Tennessee is going to be rocking.